What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and today I'm doing something that you have been asking me for a very long time. So pretty much every week I get multiple questions of people asking me uh, do I have some sort of a template which I can share with them. So when it comes to working in Revit, having a good template is really important as it can really reduce the amount of work that you have to do on each project. So what I'm talking about is uh, when it's time to work on your project, it's really annoying to have to set everything up for each project, load in all of the necessary families, make all of the settings, create all of the schedules, the title blocks, and prepare the template for your work. Uh, now, uh, what's really good about uh, creating using templates is the fact that you can have all of that already set up. You don't have to load anything in uh, unless you're using some really special families or something really particular. Uh, you don't have to set anything up because everything is already set up for you. So uh, none of that busy work is included in your project. You can just concentrate on what's important and that's doing creative work. Uh, that's what all of us architects uh, want to do. So that's why I created this template. It's going to be available on my website balkanarchitect.com. It's going to be the first link in the description just below the video. Uh, so it takes you to our website. There I have a more complicated uh, in-depth explanation of what you get with this template. Uh, but basically just to give you a little rundown now is you're going to get all of the necessary families that you need to get started. So that includes all of the windows, doors, uh, components, furniture, everything that you need to get started working on your project. It's, it's also going to include some really important settings. So for example, uh, something that I find really annoying with Revit is the fact that uh, the default material is that ugly gray. So when you start creating walls and floors and things like that, if it's just set to default, it's going to appear as gray. So I turned that into just a nice uh, default white color. Same thing with topography, it defaults to earth, which is kind of odd. You want the topography to be usually in grass. So that's something else that I've set up. So just by default, everything is going to be set up to your liking. And it also has a lot of presets, uh, a lot of uh, view templates, it has schedules. So as you're working, creating your project, uh, the schedules are immediately being filled out with information, you don't have to really set anything up, it's already there. Uh, also, I have some 3D trees which are really nice for those renderings and presentation views, much better than the trees that come with Revit. Uh, I've got some people, some R RPC uh, people families, they do come with Revit but they're never set up correctly, so I set up all of the types and make everything uh, look exactly how it should be. So for all of these families, they come from my personal library, now some of these families I just found over a year, over over the years, uh, searching through those free websites like Revit City, BIM Object, and so on. And for other families, I have developed them myself to in, uh, increase the workflow or increase the uh, the efficiency of the workflow, and also to increase the quality of my project. So I want my projects to look good, so these families look good, but also I want them to be able to be set up as fast as possible with least hassle, and they are set up in that way. So that's uh, that's what I find really important, so that's what I decided to share with you guys. Uh, so now I'm just going to be jumping into Revit real quickly to give you a bit more of a rundown of everything that you get uh, or everything that's included in this uh, template and also I'm planning on improving this template uh, and if you uh, decide to get that template now, any updates that you decide to make, they will be updated directly in the template itself. So now let's jump into Revit and see what we have. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Revit and I'm just going to keep this quick. I just want to show you uh, how these, this template looks like. So as you can see, when we open it up, it's just a simple template. There's nothing existing on the drawing. You're supposed to do the drawing. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's take a look at it. So here, for example, for walls, you do have uh, some new wall types, some custom wall types, but also uh, when you create those walls, you know how it usually appears in ugly gray when you go into 3D? Uh, well, now if you go into 3D, even if you go into realistic, it's just going to have that white appearance, which I think looks uh, much, much nicer. Let's go back to hidden line. Uh, anyways, that's for walls. Of course, if you want to place any doors, you have uh, all of the different uh, types of doors that you can imagine, even a garage door, everything that you need. And also here it includes my complex door family from uh, my uh, family editor uh, course, where it includes uh, one door family, which can be 
uh, of course, set up as a classical door or as a regular door or even as a door with window. And it's all completely parametric. You can set the uh, uh, panel angle, so the, the swing. And also you can turn on if you want to have either a doorknob or a door handle and so on and so forth. It's very customizable. If you go into edit type here, you have many other settings. So I think it's a really versatile family. So if I just place a simple wall here, place it there, that's that family. And again, as I said, you have uh, numerous different families, but this is the idea. So it's just one family and then you can set it up as uh, numerous different uh, door uh, types. So as you can see, it can look like that. It can look like a regular door and then you can also control the, the panel swing so it can be closed or it can be completely open. Uh, there we go. Okay, moving on, we have windows, of course, so we have any type of window that you can imagine. It's already loaded in with multiple dimensions, so you can pick out the exact uh, type of a window as, and also the exact dimension. We have a skylight window, uh, and then also we have my personal window, which is uh, really good because it has uh, detailing. It has uh, also, if I go here into level one, you can play around with its position alongside the wall uh, really easily. Easily. And also when you zoom in, maybe turn on thin lines, uh, it has the detail and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's for Windows. As you can see, all of the necessary families are already uh, loaded in. Uh, also for components, I'm not going to go too much in depth. As you can see, we have so many different types of components. Uh, if you want something for kind of interior design and for architecture here, we have uh, a lot of furniture loaded in, uh, casework families, uh, bathroom families, kitchen families, uh, desks, tables, sinks, so on and so forth. We have uh, also people families, so we have trees. Uh, so here are the people, Alex, Dwayne, Jane. Uh, these are available with Revit, but they have to be uh, kind of uh, set up and it takes uh, a bit of time to set them up as different types. So I've done that job for you uh, and so on and so forth here. As you can see, everything that you can imagine, it's there. Uh, a lot of my personal families, personal light families, for example, this bathroom combo, it's really useful when it comes to creating bathrooms. So it looks like this. As you can see, it's uh, completely parametric. If you go in level one, you can adjust it any way you like. So you can extend one side, you can change the position of the sink just like that, super simple. And then also you can change the sync type. So now it's this one that's kind of embedded in the uh, in, in kind of the, 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 the construction, but also you can go here, just uh, switch one little check sign. And now it's this cool modern, uh, elegantly shaped sync. So uh, really versatile, really cool families are all included here. And of course, what a lot of people are looking for, uh, 3D trees. I have my personal collection of 3D trees that I've accumulated over the years. Uh, so here you can find them all. They all uh, look uh, very, very good. So as you can see, uh, these are nice trees. They have nice shadows and so on and so forth. Uh, also, uh, we have some uh, view templates. So if you don't want to mess around with the view templates, so if you have to go here to visibility graphics overrides, you have to go here to the manage tab, go to object styles, go to materials, uh, go to additional settings so to set up the lines. There's so much work. Well, here we have uh, just a template for that. So for example, this one, the minimalistic 3D template that looks kind of like that. It looks really good. Uh, it's really great for renderings. Uh, you do have to add a bit more color there, but as you can see, it can, it's almost as good as actual rendering. So I really like the, uh, the way it works. And of course you can change to different, uh, templates if you, uh, if you want. Uh, anyways, uh, also uh, here we have, if I go here to uh, our schedules, as you can see, we have multiple types of schedules already loaded in. So we have a room schedule, which is of course really important. Uh, and here you can input the room number, name, level, department, uh, area. We have the percentage of area. So what's the percentage of each room uh, um, according to the kind of complete percentage. And also we have finishes both for floors, uh, walls, floors, and ceilings. Uh, we have other ones like the uh, room style schedule. So this one is going to help you out to fill out all of these 
uh, fields here. So that's what that schedule is for. It makes everything really simple. And then also we have a sheet list schedule. So every time you create sheets, this uh, sheet list schedule is going to give you the sheet number and sheet name. So you know how many sheets you're working with. And also we have project notes. Uh, so if at any point uh, on your uh, project, if you decide to add a note, and of course then there is a dedicated uh, note family, uh, for that, let's see, you know, these are details, uh, note family, here we go. So if you decide to add a note, we can add a leader here. We can say just like that, select that note, add text, like fix this. So that's note zero. And then when you go to project notes, there we go. Note zero says fix this. So you can add these notes. It makes it really simple to add kind of messages and information in the model without having to write text all over the model. Speaking of text, when you go here to text, uh, we have numerous text uh, styles. So you can uh, choose from all of these over here, much better than ones that come with Revit. Same thing goes here with dimensions. Uh, we have my personal uh, either bank Gothic and century Gothic uh, uh, fonts, which I uh, really like. And of course, everything has been stylized and uh, designed to perfection. Uh, moving on, one of the most annoying families to set up are our stairs and railing. Well, here, as you can see, we have many more stair types than uh, usually come uh, with Revit. So I've added all of my personal stairs that I have created over the years. So for example, uh, we have this one. And also you can see that the display style of the stair is much nicer than it is usually in Revit. Uh, so here we can see that the cut is much more elegant. We don't have those uh, ugly dashed lines everywhere. Everything is a lot cleaner. Uh, so that's the classical stair. Let's add a few more. Uh, we have the modern floating stair, which we can add here kind of up against this wall. Finish, maybe move this off to the side a little bit. Let's go again. Uh, let's try private steel stair. So that's one made out of steel. And then also we can go with something. Oops, there we go. Let's go with the office building stair. Let's try that as well. Okay, so now once we have all of these stairs, if I go to the 3D view, you can see what that looks like. Maybe if we go into realistic, it will look even better. So as you can see, we have these stairs. Okay, it looks really ugly with this type of railing, but you get the point. It's this minimalistic stair that kind of gets embedded inside of a wall. Uh, here we have a really nice kind of a uh, classical uh, stair. Then we have just uh, this is just a regular stair. Okay, this is the one that comes through the, uh, the, the this is the regular one. Let's try home stair. Yeah, much better. So we have uh, this type as well. And then also here for the uh, concrete stair. Uh, you can see that it has been modified as well. It has a nice little finish uh, made out of traveling stone. So it doesn't look like a ugly concrete stair. It actually has a nice stone finish, which is something that you're probably going to see uh, when it comes to <laughs> stairs. Okay, this looks silly with the window. Maybe get rid of the window. So there you go. That's for the stairs. And then also for railings, I am not going to place all of these, but as you can see, uh, we have uh, many new ones. Uh, we have the classical railing, we have the pipe handrail when it comes to situations such as this one here up against the wall. And then also we have a fence, uh, which can come in useful, especially when you adapt it to topography. Uh, also for lines, uh, I have uh, created uh, additional line types. So uh, if you're ever in a situation where you need some additional lines here, you will notice that there are additional lines line setup. And also the original lines have been modified a little bit uh, to improve the whole aesthetic. Uh, and also for sheets, uh, if we go here to create a new sheet, we have a couple of title blocks, you can actually load in an additional uh, one which is available with the family pack. Speaking of the family pack, this is what that looks like. So we have the base cabinets, we have cars, entourage, lighting, uh, seating, uh, title blocks, as well as trees. So for example, for lights, these are all families that I have created either in tutorials or just for myself that, that, that they are designed
different to kind of improve the, the whole aesthetic of your models. Uh, we have many, many cars, as you can see, pretty much any car that you might be interested in. <laughs> and then also here we have a bunch of entourage families. People have been asking me for these for improving the uh, exterior of the building, so they're there. Uh, we have a bunch of seating uh, title blocks, as I said, here we go. We have a A2, A3, and A4, which are the kind of the standardized uh, sizes. And also here we have a bunch of these 3D trees as well. So there you go. That's the template. And of course, it comes empty without anything. And then you can fill it up with your own uh, with your own models and designs. It's just designed to kind of help you out, have a, a bit of a kickstart when starting to work on projects. You don't have to set everything up manually. You can uh, do it. Uh, you can have it just automatically done for you. So again, as I said, it's available uh, down on my website. So link is in the description. Uh, go check it out if you're interested just below the video. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this little uh, video, a uh, little overview. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you like the template. Uh, and if you decide to get it, tell me uh, either by email or in the comments what you think about it. Do you find it useful and so on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this quick little video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.